It's just live. Well, good morning, everybody. Hello, hello. We are streaming live on YouTube today because Facebook is misbehaving itself. So hopefully all of you Facebook viewers will find your way over here. Um, I don't know what's up. So we are just still going to stream live and we'll post this video onto the Facebook page later on once Facebook has... Um, gotten its poop in a group, if you know what I'm saying. Welcome to 50 Blocks in 50 Weeks. My name is Brady. I'm your host for this show. And this week we are doing block number 19. I got a vision the other night as I was laying in bed of a heartbeat monitor. Some of you may have heard that Matt's father is very ill. He's been moved into hospice and, you know, we've been seeing a lot of heartbeat monitors lately. So I decided I'm going to do a, a heartbeat monitor block in uh, honor of Matt's dad. And when I put it together, didn't quite look like a heartbeat monitor but as I built it it began to look like little pyramids or even teepees I almost called it teepees but I decided to go with pyramids instead so this is my pyramid block I've done it in navy and white so super simple we're only gonna need a couple of fabrics just one strip of each let's see what did I put it at so with the navy fabric we're gonna need a four inch wide strip and just Give yourself the full 44 inches, the width of fabric strip. That's what WOF stands for. And the white, we're going to need a six inch by width of fabric strip. Now, if you are new to 50 blocks in 50 weeks, I'd like to invite you to the website at sparrowquiltco.com. And you're going to click the link for 50 blocks in 50 weeks. Put your email and your name in there. And every week you will get a link mailed to you with the pattern attached. And if you're just joining this week, it's okay because the email is going to contain all the prior blocks and you'll be able to catch up in no time at all. You might have to work a little bit extra harder though, okay? So get busy. Now I'd also like to uh, invite you to our Facebook group. It's called Sparrow Quilt Co. Daily and it is such a fun community of quilters. You never ever ever have to feel like you're sewing alone again. There is always going to be thousands of friends in that group who are happy to share um, comments on your pictures and um, help you out with any problems that you're having. But I love checking out that group because everybody shares their fabrics, shares their progress on the blocks. And don't think that you have to only be working on my patterns. I don't mind if you post other stuff in the group there. So share whatever you're working on and just have some fun in that group. Make sure you check it out, Sparrow Quilt Co. Daily. And since we're streaming live on YouTube today, I'd also love if you would become a subscriber of our YouTube channel there please. And then you'll get a notification every time we add a new video because I'd hate for you to miss out on something. I'm terribly nosy and I hate missing out on stuff. So that's my advice for following us on social media. Now, once you have your two strips of your two different fabrics, now maybe you don't want to do navy, maybe you want to do a different color, you go right ahead. It's your quilt. You do what you want. Okay. You do what you want. Your quilt, your money, your time, all that good stuff. Let's go over how we're going to chop up our fabrics in order to create this block. <laughs> I know. It's, um, it's too bad. It's frustrating. That darn Facebook. Oh, good. Yay. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. So what we're going to do first with our white fabrics is... Oh, where's my strips? I'm missing my strips. We're going to cut three squares that are three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. Lennon, will you go look in the other room for me quickly? I've left some one and seven eighths strips. They're folded in half, I think, just on my desk there. So the first thing we're going to cut is three squares that are three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. And then what I want you to do is cut those on the diagonal once. So you're going to have six little rectangles. Okay. That's what you're going to do with those three and seven eighths squares. We're going to magically turn them into recta, into triangles. So let's get those out of there. Awesome. Oh, you're the best. Thank you so much. Perfect. Yes. All right. We are also going to need from our white fabrics three strips that are one and seven eighths inch wide by 12 and a half long. Okay. You're going to need three of those. And those are going to be our little uh, strips there in our block. So that's it for the whites. The whites are simple all this stuff out of here. Now when it comes to our navy, the first thing I would like you to cut is three squares. Again, these are three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. And again, we're going to cut those on the diagonal so that you get six triangles. Okay, start with three and seven eighths inch squares, cut them once on the diagonal, you're going to end up with six triangles. 
you're also going to need, oh, I better check how big this is. So the next thing I cut actually was um, six little squares. And these are one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths, just under two inches, okay? Just a hair under two inches or an eighth of an inch under two inches. So then once you've cut that from your four inch strip, then you could narrow your strip up to three and a half inches and you're gonna need two rectangles that are three and a half by six and a half. Okay, three and a half by six and a half. And don't forget, you can access this pattern by visiting us at sparrowquiltco.com. Just submit your information there and you'll get the weekly emails, okay? The last two pieces we're gonna cut are two squares that are three and a half by three and a half in the navy. Okay, in the navy. Sail the seven seas. Do y'all remember that song? It's an old one. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is piece together the navy and the white. And we don't have to be too uh, fussy about placement. You're just gonna piece them together. And then the next step is gonna be to add little squares in the corner. And again, we won't have to be too fussy. This block is quite simple. So the orientation of everything um, is quite easy to keep track of. The one thing that I did mess up and I did fix it yesterday, I did this row upside down. So I had to rip that off and rip this off and sew it again. But while you're creating this part, we're gonna be creating these little blocks right here, the navy with white and then navy in the corner. That's what we're gonna be piecing right now. So let's start with the navy triangles and the white triangles, and we're just gonna sew those together in pairs. We're gonna need six of those total. And I'm gonna plug in my iron so it's hot when I need it. Pardon me, ducking down just a moment. Good, she's on. All right, I'm just gonna line these up quickly so they're ready to go. Kind of assembly line sewing. Now, how's the sound, everybody? Because we're on a different platform today, I just wanna make sure that everything is going as planned. So leave me a little comment there if you can hear me well, okay? Let me know where you're watching from. I love to know where everybody's watching from. Now, can you hear the long arms running in the background? We've got a renter back there today. She is finishing up a quilt. So if you're anywhere nearby, you should come to up by sometime, take a class and uh, learn how to use the long arms here. Now, I know a lot of you are watching from far and wide, and I shouldn't expect that you can just march yourself down here to rent one of our long arm machines. So if you need some quilts finished, and I, all, I know we all do, check out our special that's going on right now. We have got a buy one, get one 50% off special on long arm quilting. So I would like to encourage you to take advantage of that because that's a pretty significant savings. And then you don't have to feel guilty about buying more fabric because you finished more quilts. Right, everybody with me on that one? Do you ever get in that mindset where you're like, I'm not buying another thing. I need to finish more projects. I can relate to that. I have so much fabric, it's disgusting. It's not disgusting. It's all beautiful, if I'm being honest. But. But I too have quilts to finish, so I have to force myself to get things done so that I don't feel guilty about starting something new. And I almost brought home another new project the other night, and then I said, Brady, <laughs> finish what you got at home, girl. Sometimes you have to talk to yourself like that. Be disciplined. All right. So I am just piecing up six of these half square triangles. They're half navy, half white, very simple, right? And if you prefer to use a different method of making half square triangles, go right ahead. Go right ahead. You can maybe cut these a little bit bigger and then trim them down to three and a half once you've pieced them together. I really like doing it with the triangles because it feels quicker to me. And they come out the right size. I don't have to trim them down. What's that? All of says I never feel guilty when it comes to fabric. Oh, good for you, Olive. We shouldn't feel guilty about fabric. It makes me feel terrific. It's just so pretty. 
Why are you pulling? What's going on? Oh, my scissors were in the way, holding things up. Well, let's get them out of there. All right, I'm just going to shuffle, shuffle a bit of stuff around and move this a little bit closer for myself. Do, 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 do. All right, so now I have pieced my six half square triangles. And if you've watched me before, you know that I really, really, really feel better once I've trimmed all my threads. I gotta get them out of there. I don't like the threads hanging around. Keeps things neater, tidier. And now I'm going to press these open. I'm gonna press them towards the darker fabric. But first I am going to apply my Easy Press Solution. So this is a really cool uh, tool that I use when I'm sewing. This is the Easy Press Pen. This is the Easy Press Solution. These are uh, manufactured by Acorn Precision Piecing Products. And it's just a really excellent system to help us get better precise results. So what I do is I swipe it along my um, seam that I've just sewn. And it's a starch of sorts in there. And what happens is it just makes that fabric fold open effortlessly. So when I do it just with some finger pressing, we can see how it doesn't flatten. And why would it, right? Why would it? But I've also tried this with water. I just ran a little bit of water across the seam and it will flatten for a moment, but then it springs back. It gets this lift that you see here. However, when I apply the Easy Press Solution and I open it up, it just goes perfectly flat. So I love this when I'm at retreat and I don't want to keep getting out of my chair to go press. Um, I love this when I'm just feeling lazy and I don't want to get out of my chair to go press. Or maybe I forgot my iron. There's all kinds of scenarios as to why we don't want to press. But when I do press it with the iron, it gets so flat and so crisp that it just makes my little day. I used to feel like I was fighting with ironing, but I don't feel like that anymore. It feels like my pressing is actually worth it. So I do highly recommend this pretty cool little easy press pen. Now keep in mind when you purchase the pen, it comes empty. So you have to buy the solution too, okay? Or you can buy the whole uh, precision piecing pack. It's like a starter kit. And it's got a little glue in there as well that you can use in place of pins. It's pretty slick. I'm a bit of a pin addict, so I'm finding it hard to get away from that. All right, I am just piecing, or I'm just pressing up my half square triangles. We are making the block that you see on the table here in front of me. I'm calling it the pyramids block. It really, I want to call it the TP block. <laughs> yeah, I sure can. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. So we don't know what's going on with Facebook today, guys. S something is misbehaving over there. Maybe their servers crashed. I don't know. It's amazing to me that Facebook still works properly with all the users. It's just shocking to me that we don't have this problem on a regular basis. So here we are on YouTube today, streaming live. I'm going to turn down the steam. You can see I'm using my wool pressing mat underneath my piecing here, and they do recommend not to use steam. So if you've seen my video before where I said about using steam, just leave that out of the equation. Don't use it. What happens is it gets a bit damp. So if you do use steam on it, maybe um, hang it to dry or like stand it up so that it's not just collecting moisture on the underside. Because that's not a good thing. We don't want that. All right, so I've got six of these cute little half square triangles. My next step is to attach a square in this corner. I'm gonna sew on the angle and I'm gonna trim away that outer corner so that I can create my little square that looks like this one right here. So the first thing I need to do with my squares is mark a little line on the back side of them. Now I'm using a dark fabric today, so I'm really gonna mark heavily with my lead pencil. Or you could use a white pencil that shows a little bit better. So I like to line it up 
so that the ruler is tip to tip, but just a little bit off to the side so that I'm actually drawing my line from tip to tip. If my ruler is at the tip, then my line is slightly off of center. And, you know, it's not like we're building a house here and the whole foundation or the whole, <laughs> this is the foundation and the whole project depends on this, but the more precise I can be, the better. I like to be precise because fabric is expensive and I'm making something for someone I love, so I like to put my best effort into it. All right, so I am just marking a little diagonal line on each one of these little squares and then I'm going to place them on the white corner and I'm just going to sew directly on that line, okay? Let me finish marking and then we'll get back to the sewing. Now if you are just joining us, welcome. My name is Brady and we are doing 50 blocks in 50 weeks. This is week number 19. We've been doing this ever since um, Halloween. And so 50 weeks will take us pretty close to next Halloween. And we are going to be making a lot of really fun blocks. So make sure you visit us at sparrowquiltco.com and sign up to receive the blocks. All right. Thanks for your patience there, everybody, while I get these all done. We normally have an overhead camera as well so that you can get a better look at what I'm doing, but... This is our first time on YouTube streaming live, so we're kind of making it work. We'll have to do some practice videos and figure out all the angles and stuff. All right, so I have marked a diagonal line on all six of these little squares. Now I'm just going to sew them onto the white corner of my half square triangles. And I'm going to line these all up so that they're ready to go. And you're sewing right on that line, okay? Not a quarter inch off, but right on the line. Can't see? Let's get that out of there. Okay, so I'm going to hold that up so you can see. I've got my square that I just pieced, the navy with the white, and now I've taken that small square and I'm laying it on the white corner and I've got a diagonal line drawn on there. I'm going to sew directly on that line and then we'll trim away the outer corner after we're done this. If I get them all lined up, then I can just kind of pound through the sewing. So thank you for your patience. We're getting there. I actually kind of like the look of this block. A little square in the corner with those two little triangles. That's kind of cute. No this time I don't. Yeah, I, I wasn't even going to. <laughs> We're so new to all of this stuff. Thank you for trying to share, though. I appreciate it. Thank you. How many people have found us? Maybe we should just choose a winner out of our viewers for them taking the incentive. So, you guys, uh, I'm going to choose one of you who's a viewer today, and I'm going to give you the fabric to make this block just like mine. Uh, if you can't figure out the sharing, that's okay, but leave me a comment. Pick me. <laughs> I want it. Something like that. And I will pick a winner at the end of the day because I think there should still be a reward for tracking us down here on YouTube. Oh, smart. Did you include the link? That's okay. So in today's email, Landon has included that we're live on YouTube today instead of on Facebook. And at first we thought it was just us, but there's apparently quite a few. Landon can see somewhere that there's reports that Facebook is down. Says, Hello from Kansas. Brenda says, pick me. <laughs> Hi, girls. Hi, Kansas. Thanks so much, everybody, for tracking us down over here on YouTube. 
I'm proud of your detective skills. So we don't know what's up with YouTube or with Facebook. I'm sure they'll be back and we can share this video over there once it's back up and running. So we are done piecing those little squares on there and I'm going to now trim away that outer corner. Now I have to tell you as well that this would make a really good signature block. Just this little block right here that I've made. Once you open that up, that little white space would be a great place for someone to sign their name. Let's say you were doing a, um, a wedding quilt and you wanted all the guests to sign who had arrived or one of those kinds of things. That is um, a good way to make that into a memorable item. You could use these as your signature blocks. Maybe a bit bigger, because there's not a lot of room there. So I am just going to measure a quarter inch out. So I've got one of these little blocks and I'm lining up my ruler a quarter inch outside that seam I've just sewn and I'm gonna trim off that outer corner and that's gonna go into my garbage pile, or you can put it into your scrap pile if you prefer. I don't have the patience for that. <laughs> I like to just mail them off to people, my scraps. So I'm gonna trim off that outer corner. That's what it's gonna look like. And then we're gonna press that open and it's gonna turn out like that. Kind of um, like we've sewn some stripes in there. So let's go ahead and do that with all the blocks. Just take your time, make sure it's a quarter inch. Make sure you're cutting the correct side. I made a mistake once and cut the wrong side. There's a lot of crying and swear words that day. I'm going to try and behave myself here on camera so I don't have to offend anybody. And we got two left to go. This is a fairly simple block, even though it looks a little bit tricky, it's pretty straightforward. There we go. Now we're just gonna <clears throat> press those blocks. And I'm gonna press towards the darker fabric. But first I gotta do my little, uh, my little application of my um, Easy Press pen. And like I told you earlier, this is just a pressing aid. It's like a little bit of starch that I can apply in a pen and it makes my seams so flat and so crisp that I literally just cannot even sew without it anymore. Matt calls it my crack pen. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? But I even have one at home. Can't sew without it. So thanks for joining us here on YouTube, everybody. I hope you already heard. Leave us a comment, pick me, something like that, on the uh, stream here. I'm gonna choose one of you as a winner of my fabric kit today, okay? So at the end of the show, I'll collect your personal information and I'm gonna mail you the fabric to make a block, just like mine. What's that? I think we'll do an email message today because <laughs> yeah. we don't know what's going on with Facebook. All right, so now it's time to put my block together. That sounded concerning. Sorry guys, just a second. Okay, I thought I heard a needle break. So when you've been long arming this long, you know the sounds. So now it's time for us to lay out our block. We're going to put it together. And what I like to do first are build my little um, pyramids, my little teepees. So my top row is going to have a pyramid right in the center. And the only thing you really need to pin is that um, inner corner of the darker navy. So right here, I'm going to pin those, that intersection right there. On either side of that, I'm going to need a three and a half inch square of navy. And that's going to make the top row of my block. Once I've built that row, I will attach a 12 and a half inch strip. 
My second pyramid is going to be set off to the left in row two. And again, I'm going to want to pin that little intersection, that little peak inside the pyramid. Beside that, I'm going to put my six and a half inch by three and a half inch rectangle. And again, we're going to need another strip of white along the bottom edge. So piece the row together first and then add your strip next. My last pyramid is split in half and it goes on either side of the bottom row with a rectangle in the middle. Now I also took this block and put it into a quilt and it looks like a bunch of sailboats sailing on the water. I love it, it's so cute. So I actually might make this into like a, a quilt size pattern as well. All right, let's build these three rows. Then we'll join on that little border strip on the bottom and then we'll crunch all those three rows together and we will have ourselves a little pyramid block. Sound good? So if you've watched me before, you know that I am very insistent on putting everything back after it's sewn. I can make mistakes without even turning around. Like it doesn't even take me an effort. I just screw things up. So I'm very purposeful about piecing, then putting it back, piecing, then putting it back. And that way I know that it's done correctly. And yesterday I knew I had done it correctly and it was still wrong. So that's my advice to you is do what you have to do to keep yourself on track. Sometimes it feels like it takes a little bit of extra effort, but I think it's worth it in the long run. So how many of you have been watching all along? Are most of you regular viewers? Or is this your first time watching the show? There we go. If you are a newer viewer, welcome. I'm very glad that you have found us today. I would like to extend an invitation to you to join our Facebook group. It's called Sparrow Quilt Co. Daily. Just search Sparrow Quilt Co. Daily on uh, Facebook there, when Facebook is back up and running. And you will be able to join our um, little sewing community. We've got thousands of quilters there actively participating, sharing pictures, sharing advice. And it's just a really fun group that makes you feel like you have a million quilting friends. So many of us are sewing by ourselves and our friends look at us like we're crazy because they don't understand the lingo and what exactly we're, we're cutting up perfectly good fabric and sewing it back together. So find some new quilting friends in the Sparrow Quilt Co. Daily group. I think you'll really enjoy it. And please, please click that little subscribe button here on YouTube as well and subscribe to our channel. All right. So that little point turned out pretty darn good. These seams don't need to match up, so you can kind of press them in whichever direction you want. I'm pressing everything towards the darker fabric because then I don't see it under my lighter fabrics. But like I said, there's no matching of any intersections here, so um, you can just press it whatever direction is easiest for you. All right, that top row is complete. We'll just give it a little press. And then I think I'll just go ahead and add my little white border strip. Getting that iron right out of the way today. I'm sorry that I don't have an overhead view. We spontaneously decided to stream live on YouTube due to the issues with Facebook this morning. All right, I'm just keeping this nice and straight, adding on this uh, white strip along the bottom of this row. And then we'll press this. Now what I found in this um, step is that it was hard to press it towards the navy. So I just pressed this seam towards the white because there's very little resistance there. There's no, 
no seams, like see all these intersections on this side? That gives me resistance. So instead of fighting that, I'm just going to press it towards this white. And then it will get nice and flat for me. And so many people say to me, I didn't realize that pressing was so important. I didn't realize that it added that extra level of precision to my blocks. And it is so true. If you do not press your blocks open, then you're not going to get the full size of what that fabric should measure. So pressing is very crucial for the success of your quilting. Oh, Brenda, I am using Aurifil thread. This color is, I think it's aluminum. It's Aurifil number 2600. There's no name on it. It's just, it's a light gray. It's like a silvery, it's either silver or aluminum. I like to just use like a neutral light gray. Sometimes I'll use a tan. Um, but I love the Aurifil thread for piecing. It just never seems to give me any problems, the Aurifil. All right, so I have just pieced my pyramid in my second row. Now I'm going to add on that uh, rectangle to the right of it. And we'll just line that up, piece it together, and then we can press this row. We are just cruising right through this block today. If you haven't had a chance to leave me a comment, please do so. I want to pick someone who has left a comment today to win the fabric to make this block. I'm going to send it to you in the mail. Pamela's asking if I designed this block. Yes, I sure did. I try to draw all the blocks. I don't like to use, I'm using a quilt design software for all these blocks, but I don't like to use the blocks straight out of the software because it feels like I'm just copying someone else's work. So I'm trying to come up with original ideas every week. And um, I think I've only used one block out of the library software. And that's this week that I was sick as a dog. <laughs> excuses, excuses, hey? All right, so this block, this little row is complete. Now I'm going to attach that little border row underneath. But remember, put everything back after you stitched it to make sure that it is lined up properly. You don't want to be ripping stuff apart like Brady. Okay. And again, I'm going to press this seam towards the white strip. It is much easier to press it that direction than up towards the navy. There's a lot of seams there, so there's resistance. Now, how many of you have quilts that need to be quilted? Raise your hands or leave a comment and tell me how many have you got? One, two, eight, 30? Give me a comment there. I've got lots too. So don't feel ashamed. I've got tons. Olive has six. <laughs> Three, not bad. I can, I can think of at least five, at least. <laughs> And they're in various stages of quilting, you know, like maybe one's got a row quilted or maybe one's got half quilted, but yeah, I have got lots that aren't, haven't even been on the frame yet. Oh, I'm impressed. You guys are keeping up pretty good. So 
So now that I got your mind on it, I just want to remind you that long arm quilting here at the shop is buy one, get one 50% off. And you know what? When you ship it to me, I pay to ship it back to you. So it works out pretty good. And if you buy your batting from us, it'll be more affordable to ship it. You'll need a smaller box with less weight. So keep that in mind, guys. If you want to get your quilts finished, we've got a pretty fast turnaround time too. Okay, that is row three put together. And I am going to, I'm just gonna press both of these towards that uh, center rectangle. Again, least resistance. Oh, Olive, that is, that's awesome that you do the straight line quilting. That's sure uh, popular these days. It's a nice way to finish a quilt and it doesn't take away from your design. Probably pretty easy on your domestic machine too, isn't it? Okay, so this is where I went wrong yesterday. I put my block in like this, my row, but I really want it to be like this. So this is why I've been attaching my white strip as I go, because then nothing can get it turned around. I know the white strip has to be on the bottom of the row. So yes, that's what my block looks like. Yes, that's what my picture looks like. We're set. Let's stitch that down so I can't mess it up. All right, get this beauty under the needle. All right, that's almost done. All right, I know this video was a little bit different than normal, but leave me a comment there. What do you think? Would you prefer Facebook or YouTube moving forward? What would be your preference to watch? We've tried to figure out how to do both at the same time. It just requires a level of technology we've not quite figured out. All right, and again, I am just using my Easy Press pen to make my fabric fold open effortlessly, make my pressing more effective. And now we are ready to join our three rows together. So I'll just put this one right side down, right sides facing each other, and we'll zip up this little seam. All right, we're in the home stretch now, my quilty darlings. So close. Now, just so you know as well, we have lots of shorter tutorials. Every Wednesday we do this um, live stream of actually building the block, but then we do a um, fast and dirty version of each block really, really quickly. It's about three to five minutes long. So if you want the faster version, you can also look for that here on YouTube. Just go to our quilting channel and you will find all the prior blocks done in that faster format as well. And if you want the PDF downloads, you're going to have to visit us at sparrowquiltco.com and join that um, mailing list so that every Wednesday you get your pattern and you get a reminder that the video is going live. But don't worry, if you cannot join us live, the videos get recorded and they just live there on the internet. So you could come back and watch us at midnight if you want. And please do consider joining that Sparrow Quilt Co. Daily Group. It's kind of a direct access point. You know, if people have questions, I can answer them right there. I go through the group in the morning and I go through the group in the evening and just make sure that there's no um, quilting disasters going on that need patching up, offer advice, support, and love. 
but it's really growing quite quickly. So I hope you'll consider joining us. There's so many great quilters in there participating. And like I said, you don't have to only post pictures of our patterns. You can post whatever you happen to be working on. All right, that is the last seam in this pyramid block. We are going to, we, I am going to apply my Easy Press solution one last time. And then we will flip this baby open. There she is. And like I said, if you make a couple of these blocks and you add them all together, they look like little sailboats. Landon's so smart. <laughs> Let's see if we can get a good view. I planned it so that the blocks that are falling off are going to line up with the block, the next block. So yeah, it just looks like little sailboats sailing away on the water. So there you have it. That is block number 19 in our 50 blocks in 50 weeks. We are just really making our way through this um, <clears throat> 50 weeks of quilting and at the end of it you are going to have an amazing collection of quilt blocks what we did with the first 12 is put them together in one quilt and you could probably do that four times throughout this and maybe put the remaining two blocks in a backing or something like that but it <clears throat> what's that so the name of the facebook group is sparrow quilt co daily so I don't know if Facebook is back up and running yet, but when it is, go ahead and just search Sparrow Quilt Co. daily and it will bring up the group. And you can also like our Sparrow Quilt Co. business page as well. Ah, I love this Sparrow QE. It's got a little bit of a bigger throat and um, it's very responsive when I, when I hit the pedal. When I drive, I need it to move. So I really like the speed of this machine. Um, it's got the thread cutter. It's, it's got everything. It's a really great machine. I'm liking it a lot. But all the Sparrow machines have done uh, really well here. I have not had issues with any of them. So if you are just joining us and you want to join in on the blocks, you're going to visit us at sparrowquiltco.com. There's a link there that you can click. You're just going to look for this little logo here, the 50 blocks in 50 weeks. And then you can put in your email and your name. And every Wednesday, you will receive the block instructions by email. And don't worry, if you're just joining this week, it includes all the blocks so you can make your way back and get them all done. <clears throat> Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, being as we're here on YouTube today. We would be honored to have you as a subscriber. And then you get a notification every time we add a new video. So that keeps you in the loop, which is a really good thing. Lastly, don't forget about that long arm quilting special. Buy one, get one 50% off. I pay the return shipping. It's a really, really good price. We've got a fast turnaround right now as well. So next what I need to do is choose a winner. One of you lucky viewers is going to win the fabric kit to make this block just like mine. So Miss Landon, have you chosen? Teresa Baker. Teresa Baker. Teresa Baker, congratulations. Everybody say congratulations to Teresa. Thank you so much everybody for watching. Teresa, what I would love for you to do, please send us an email. The email address is info at sparrowquiltco.com. Please indicate that you are block 19 winner. We're going to need your shipping address, your email address, and your phone number, please. Again, congratulations, Teresa. Thanks, everybody, today for your detective work and tracking us down here on YouTube. I'm thrilled that you were able to join us, and uh, we will see you next Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. Now, are we going to do an auction on Friday afternoon? If any of you are familiar with our auctions, um, what we do is we take like bolt ends and um, just pieces of fabric that are around and need to, they're kind of clearance. So we put them on sale. I show them to you live on video and you can go to the website and you can buy them at a discounted price. And how our auction works, it's a reverse auction. So the prices drop as the day goes on. So join us on Friday afternoon. I hope it will be back on Facebook because <laughs> that's where we normally do it. So check out the Sparrow Quilt Co. business page and that's where the auction video will be on Friday afternoon. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching and we will see you on Friday.